Hello and welcome back to the second uh, video in the series on understanding Home Assistant. Uh, this video is all about integrations. Uh, so I've been talking a lot about integrations in, in the last video as well. What are integrations? So to understand that, let's first go to uh, Google and just type in Home Assistant integrations to go to the Home Assistant integration page. And what integrations are is th they're platforms that, just, you know, as the word name suggests, integrate with Home Assistant. Um, and the, you know, stuff that can communicate with Home Assistant and back. Uh, so we have stuff like Amazon Alexa works, uh, Philips Hue, uh, Plex Media Server, Samsung SmartThings. Uh, and there's a whole list of officially supported integrations here. So we have stuff like alarms, um, you know, cameras, doorbells, uh, finances even, image processing, lights, uh, and so on. Media sources. Uh, so all these here are what's officially supported by Home Assistant. But this is not a, a completely exhaustive list as there's integrations that are also developed by the community as well. Now, by clicking on one of these integrations, uh, let's use Philips Hue as an example because I know a lot of people are familiar with Philips Hue. Uh, it, it takes us to this documentation page for that integration. And on this page, it, it shows you how to add uh, that, that particular integration into your Home Assistant. Um, and then there's also different options that are that are there. Uh, it, it gives you instructions on how to use the integration within Home Assistant, so using Hue scenes. Um, and it also gives you a bunch of like caveats or any sort of issues that the integration may be having. Uh, so it's it's very important that you get comfortable uh, using these documentations for different types of integrations. But arguably one of the most important things to understand about different integrations. Is over here at the side. So if you if you uh, if you read this paragraph here, it says, "Oh, Philips Hue integration was introduced in Home Assistant uh, 0 0.6, used by 17.2 percent of active installations, and its IoT class is local polling." Uh, so it's very important to understand what IoT class is. This. And we have a page here. If I click on um, local polling, uh, that explains these IoT classes. So I'm going to briefly explain what these different IoT classes are. So the term IoT class refers to how the integration or the device in question is sending information to your Home Assistant installation. And there's five different IoT classes listed here. There's assume state, cloud polling, cloud push, local polling, and local push. Uh, so I'll briefly explain each one of these starting with local push. Uh, what local push means is that the device or integration in question will actively push a message to your Home Assistant installation every time there's a state change. And it will push this information through your local home network rather than through the internet. Uh, so for example, let's say we have a light bulb, like the light bulb in my room. Every time I turn the light bulb on or off, it will actively send a message to Home Assistant saying, I have been, the light has been turned on or the light has been turned off. And these type of uh, integrations is the best type of integrations, especially for automations, because as soon as there's a state change, Home Assistant knows right away. The latency between the state change and Home Assistant being aware of the state change is within milliseconds or e even less. Uh, the second type is local polling. So in contrast to local push, the device or integration will not send a message to Home Assistant, but rather it will be Home Assistant that is polling or asking the device, has there been a state change? And because it's Home Assistant asking, it can it does it in every inter, uh, in intervals of certain time. So for example, every 10 seconds, Home Assistant asks uh, a device, uh, what is, uh, let's say a light bulb again, it asks, is the light on or off? And then 10 seconds later, it asks again, is the light on or off? Uh, so the, the, these are not as good as local push because there may be some sort of delay between a state change and uh, Home Assistant being aware of the state change because Home Assistant only polls at a certain interval. Uh, a lot of uh, media server uh, media services like um, TVs, receivers, um, Nvidia, Android TV, stuff like that, they are local polling type devices. Uh, then next up is Cloud Push. So Cloud Push is similar to Local Push in the sense that the integration will actively push information to Home Assistant. Uh, but it does that through the internet. So there will be an internet, uh, a cloud service somewhere, a cloud server 
that will actively push uh, a piece of information to your Home Assistant installation. Now, the issue with Cloud Push is that the server in the cloud will need to know where your Home Assistant installation is located, which means that you may have to set up DNSs if you don't have a static IP, and you'll have to do some port forwarding on your router. So it's a little bit more of a setup than local push type devices. Uh, and the latency here is generally pretty good uh, because it's still a push type, but because the cloud server is much further away, uh, there will be some sort of delay uh, in cloud push uh, compared to local push at least, but it will still be in the milliseconds. Uh, and then there's cloud polling, which is perhaps one of the worst ones out of the, the four conventional ones. Uh, and cloud polling is similar to local polling in that Home Assistant is asking the integration, what is your state? Uh, and it can only do that in certain intervals of time. And because it's located on a cloud server, most of these cloud servers will have a limit of how often Home Assistant can ask for an uh, update. Uh, so with, with a lot of these integrations, it's 60 seconds. It may be five minutes every five minutes and there's an update uh, and so on. So with cloud polling type integrations, there can be a significant delay, up to a minute, up to a five minutes between a state change and between uh, the home assistant being aware of that state change. Uh, and lastly, there's assume state. And assume state means that there's no way for the integration to communicate information to home assistant. That being said, home assistant may still be able to communicate information to the device. Uh, so for example, uh, if you have any sort of RF control blinds, Home Assistant can send RF signals to the blind saying open or close, but there is no way for Home Assistant to know if the device is, or if the blinds are open or closed. Um, so the only way Home Assistant can know is by taking a guess based on whether they were closed before or whether they were open. Now the reason understanding IoT classes is so important is because it's important to understand what the delay may be between a state change and between Home Assistant being aware of it. So you can, when setting up automations, you can account for that. Uh, so for example, we know that with cloud polling type integrations, there's a significant delay, but with local push type integrations, uh, there's almost no delay. Uh, so say if I'm setting up an automation to trigger an alarm when my door is open. Uh, well, if the door lock is a cloud polling type service, uh, there may be a 60 second delay or more between the door opening and the alarm being triggered. Whereas with a local push, uh, there will be absolutely no delay. And as soon as the door opens, the alarm will be triggered. Uh, and of course, you know, anytime you do have an option between a device that could be cloud polling or local push, if you haven't purchased the device already, uh, then I would always choose local push. But in many cases, you don't have an option or maybe this is not the, you know, your determining factor in purchasing something. Uh, so as I mentioned before, a lot of TVs, in fact, I think all TVs are local polling type devices. Um, a, a lot of thermostats are lo uh, cloud polling devices and so on. And, and with some type of sort of uh, some automations, it really doesn't matter if there's a delay or if there's some delay. Uh, so for example, if you're using uh, a thermostat, which such as the Echobee or Nest, which are both cloud polling type integrations, uh, if there is a delay between a change in temperature and Home Assistant being aware of it, it's usually not a big deal because temperature doesn't change as rapidly. Uh, but as my previous example with the door lock, that can be a big deal. Uh, so make sure whenever you're setting up automations that you're aware the delay between the state changes and how that's gonna affect your automations. Okay, so now that we've talked about IoT classes, let's talk about how to actually add integrations into our Home Assistant installation. Uh, so if you click on configurations here and go to integrations, we see that Home Assistant has auto-discovered a few integrations for us. And in the last video, we actually added a few of these, such as the receiver, the lights in my bedroom, uh, the Logitech Harmony Hub, which was auto-discovered as well. Uh, so this is one way to add integrations, which is just auto-discovery, and you just press configure, and it, it tells you any passwords you may need to enter or uh, any, any other information you need to enter. So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, you can also manually add configurations using the UI. And to do this, you click on the Add Integration button here. Uh, and it gives us a list of different uh, platforms that we can add. Uh, so we see we have stuff like uh, Apple TVs, August uh, for the smart locks, um, Broadlink, uh, if you have a Broadlink remote, so on. Uh, so 
Well, one of the examples actually that's interesting is there's also a COVID-19 integration. And this one, of course, doesn't correspond to any device, but rather this one tells us the number of COVID cases in your country. So I'm in Canada. So let's just add this for an, uh, an example. And this integration has been added. And now we can track within Home Assistant how many COVID cases there are in Canada. So that's how you can add integrations using the manual uh, UI configuration. Uh, at the top here, we also see a bunch of other tabs, such as devices. So if you click on devices, this shows us a list of physical devices within our integrations. Uh, so for example, we have my bedroom lights, which use a ESP chip. Uh, there's the uh, receiver that I added yesterday, uh, or rather in the last video, sorry. Uh, there's the Harmony Hub, uh, and so on. And not all integration need devices. So for example, the COVID-19, there's no corresponding device, so there's no a device uh, listed here regarding that integration. Uh, next up is entities. And entities are really the main thing that we're concerned with. So these entities are stuff like switches, lights, sensors, remotes, media players. All those are counted as uh, entities. And every integration has at least one entity. So for example, uh, my receiver has one entity, which is a media player. Um, the lights in my bedroom, there's one entity, which is a light type of entity. Uh, the COVID-19 uh, integration gives us four different entities, which are all sensors. Uh, so th the sensors correspond to the confirmed coronavirus cases, the current cases, the current number of deaths, and the current number of recoveries. Uh, there's also the Harmony Hub, which is of both a remote type entity. And then there's also a, a switch, which corresponds to the different activities on my Harmony Hub remote. And you can see there's a different types of entities here. So there's a sun type entity. And entities are really the things that we're concerned with because these are the things we control directly. Whereas the integrations just represent the platforms with which these entities are added. Uh, and lastly, there's areas, which are right now only have two rooms, but of course I can add more rooms here, such as a basement, garage, uh, and so on. So that was how to add integrations using the user interface. Now the last way to add integrations into your Home Assistant installation is using the configuration files. And for some devices, it's uh, not possible to add them using auto discovery or using the manual add integration button here. Uh, so for example, if I go back to the Home Assistant integrations page and I, sharp, uh, I search up a, a Sharp TV, which I have in my home network, Uh, this, type, uh, this TV is a fairly old TV, so it can't be added from Auto Discovery or the UI. Uh, and on this documentation page, it shows me how to add this to my installation. So it says uh, to add the TV to your installation, add the following to your configurations.yaml file. So using the file editor that I added last time, I'm going to go here. I'm going to click the configuration.yaml file, which was already open. And I'm going to copy and paste this into my configuration file. Paste. Uh, and then I can see the different options, the configuration variables that are listed here. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, of course, the platform, which is Aquas TV. I'm not changing that. The host name is the IP address. So I do need to change that to the IP address of my TV, which in this case is 192.168.3.74. Uh, then there's other optional options. Uh, so for example, the username, I don't have a username and password set on my TV. Uh, the name, uh, which, what, what, do, what do I want to name my TV? Uh, so let's add a name. Let's call it Sharp TV. And power on enabled. So if you want to be able to power on your TV, uh, yes, I do want to power on my TV from Home Assistant. So I'm going to add this as an option. And that's all I need. So I click Save. And anytime we add something to the configuration files, we're going to need to restart uh, our Home Assistant. So as I showed last time, the way we do that is you go to Configurations, down to Server Control, and I press Restart. And this will take a minute or so to restart. So we are back after a Home Assistant reboot. So let's go back to our Integrations tab. And let's see if our TV that we just added to our configuration file has been added. So if I scroll down, I can see that my Sharp TV has been added as a media player type entity. So those are the three different ways we can add integrations into our Home Assistant. 
we have auto discovery, we have the manual add integration button using the user interface, or we can add to our configuration files. Uh, and the way we get the configuration options is using the documentation for that particular entity, or sorry, integration. Uh, so that was integrations. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to actually use these integrations, uh, how to use developer tools, and how to do stuff like controlling switches, uh, turning on and off TVs, controlling the volume, controlling the input using different sensors. Uh, so make sure you go check out that video as well.